Hi everyone, I thought I would sit down today and talk to you about some things that brought a smile to my face in 2021 in the hope that maybe they may bring a smile to your face. Maybe you would like to check them out. So I sat down and I made a list of favourites, some things that I watched, some things that I have used, some things that I have worn. Some of these things you'll have heard me talk about in previous favourites videos, like clothes-wise and stuff like that, because I haven't been anywhere and also I'm, like many people, trying not to buy lots of new things. So um, you may have heard some of these crop up before, but that just means that they are double favourites, but obviously all the TV, films and stuff, those are new and I have new cooking favourites um, and a few other new favourite things as well. Um, and I would love to know what your favourite things of last year were as well in a comment down below please. Last year was not an exciting year in the ways that we would have liked it to have been, um, but there were some things that made things a bit better. So I wanted to focus on those today. So I have made a list, I think I already said that, that list is in front of me and at the top I have written reading vlogs. Making reading vlogs was something that I loved doing in 2021 and I also loved watching other people's reading vlogs. Now I do have a series on this channel where I recommend booktubers that I love and I will link the most recent video in the description box down below but someone that I don't think I've ever mentioned on this channel because they are a new-ish discovery for me. I think I started watching her in September maybe and I just find her content so calming and that is Emma over at Emmy. Her reading vlogs in particular are soothing as are her study vlogs and if you would like videos that talk about academia and also just talk about a love of books um, and Emma I feel really delights in small nature things like I do then I would recommend going and checking out her channel. I'm sure that many of you are already subscribed to her because her subscriber count is not small. It's not small but I still hadn't discovered her so just in case you also had not heard of her, my gift to you. Two random things that made me smile in 2021 with. If I wanted a lift in the morning, as in like I wanted a lift in my spirits, not you know a lift to somewhere, um, I would put on Classic FM. I often have Classic FM on in the background if I'm cooking, if I'm not listening to an audiobook, but Alexander Armstrong presenting on Classic FM, and he mainly does that in the mornings, is just the most cheerful thing I think I've ever heard in my life. It sounds like he's being sarcastic with how cheerful he is, but I don't think that he is. It's a bit hyperbolic, it's a bit over the top, but do you know what? It honestly always makes me smile. So I will um, see if I can insert like a sound bite here so you can see just how exuberant it is. Welcome, welcome. Come in, come in. I'm Alexander Armstrong. How lovely to have you with me this morning on Classic FM. Here we are at the top of another Hall of Fame hour playing just your favourites from the top 300. How are you? How is Tuesday appearing to you this crisp, largely, largely bright morning? I hope it's a, a day full of promise. And then another thing that never fails to make me smile, and at the end of the day, Mr M and I will sometimes do this, just to have a little giggle, is to watch clips of Bob Mortimer on Would I Lie to You, which you can find on YouTube. I mean, you can watch the whole show as well on the BBC iPlayer if you would like to, but I really only care about Bob Mortimer. Would I Lie to You is a show where um, guests have to present... A story to the other people on the panel and sometimes that story is true and sometimes it's something that's completely made up and they've never seen it before they have to read it off a card and either it's something they wrote on the card or they have never heard of this thing before either way they have to present it in a way that sounds as truthful as possible and Bob's stories are always so absolutely outrageous that you can't believe they could possibly be true but often they are. And the way that he tells them is joyful. I also really enjoy him on Instagram because he sometimes does this thing called, oh, I've completely forgot what it's called. Is it train man? Train guy, that's it. So sometimes Bob, when he's on a train, will get out his phone and he will record himself pretending he's on FaceTime as if he is a very privileged, waffly man talking absolute nonsense about business as if he's part of this you know posh guys club and it's really really funny frustratingly it doesn't have captions so i wanted to mention that but it does really make me giggle um, but would i lie to you should have captions because it's on the bbc and clips on youtube should have captions too so if you need a giggle i will link some things in the description box down below all right next on my list 
is clothes. And top of that list is wigs, because in 2021, I started wearing wigs. I hadn't worn them before, but my alopecia had become more extensive. And I did start wearing them, not for the wrong reasons, but not for the reason that I wanted to start wearing wigs. Essentially, I had a not very nice ableist experience, got really upset, became really self-conscious and ordered a wig late at night online. And I would rather the wig experience to begin with had been more positive, but that is just how it happened. So I have enjoyed the process of, or now enjoyed the process of wearing wigs. Um, it's been fun and continues to be fun sometimes. It's also quite emotionally weighted and difficult because it's not as if I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll dress up today. It's no, I'm getting dressed. And if I want to feel confident in myself, then I feel the need to wear wigs and that can equally be fun, but I don't like feeling as though it's something that can get to me emotionally as well. I don't think I'm explaining that very well, but I did film a video a few months ago talking about what I'd learned when it comes to styling wigs because I made some mistakes uh, over the months and I'm sure I will continue to make some mistakes because I'm learning, um, but I have enjoyed the process of learning and coming to feel more confident in wearing wigs in general. So that is something that I've enjoyed. I think that this wig is my favorite, but those are my wigs that sit on top of my, my wardrobe and I do enjoy wearing red wigs. I think those are also, also my favorites. So I think I'm feeling good about it in general, but also want to recognize that sometimes it's a bit hard, but that's not the wigs, that's society, so. <laughs> What are you gonna do about it? Um, we're gonna combat the ableism. That is what we're gonna do. Also on my list, thermals. All right, let me let me show you, right? I am wearing thermals, both tops and bottoms, and I have not, no, I have taken them off, obviously, but like, I have not taken them off during the day. I have always been wearing thermals this winter. It is cold for here. Um, don't come at me, Canadians. It is cold here for me and my arthritic self. So I have loved, wearing these particular thermals, which were new purchases for me in 2020, I think, but I picked up a few more pairs in 2021. So these are Marks and Spencer Heat Gen Plus thermals. I will link them in the description box down below. I love them. I find that they wash really well. They are super soft and they are very warm. I mean, I don't really have lots to say about them. They are thermals, but I think that they are great. Next on my list, and yes, I am gonna hold up a pair of underwear. On the internet these are moddy body period pants and yes i have mentioned them in previous end of year favorites but i don't care because every single month i am just so thrilled that they exist and every single month i think i wish that i had had those when i was younger so i think that period underwear is becoming more and more prevalent more brands are making them moddy body happens to be my personal favorite i've been using them for years so you wear them like underwear because they are underwear and then you wash them like underwear because that's what you do with, <laughs> with underwear. They are super abs absorbent, which means they take a while to dry, which is why I have quite a few pairs. And also that means they're gonna last longer as well. They're just so great for reducing waste. And for anyone like me who can't wear moon cups, they're incredible, would recommend them. Um, what else is on my list? Um, I have been loving wearing sea salt Larissa shirts. This is one of the ones that I have. You can find these on eBay. Sea salt themselves are a sustainable brand and I also wear their striped tops, their Breton tops, and I love those as well. You will normally see me wearing these um, with my Lucy and Yak dungarees. So when I'm not wearing my Lucy and Yak dungarees who are also a sustainable brand, I am living in their Alexa trousers. So these are their Alexa trousers. As you can see, so super stretchy, so comfortable. Um, I have them in a few different colors. I will insert some pictures on the screen so that you can see the different colors, but they are the most comfortable things. And I like to wear them in the winter because it's easier to wear um, jumpers with them than it is with the Lucy and Yak dungarees. So in the winter, I live in their uh, Alexa trousers and then the rest of the year, I tend to live in their dungarees and I'm very happy with those life choices. <laughs> and all of these clothes items I have mentioned before over the years because I don't tend to buy new clothes and those are the companies I gravitate towards. And Lucy and Yak, I believe now have extended their size, size range, or at least they did 
it may even be over a year ago now, to go up to, I think, a size 32 in most of their items, a UK 32. So, um, yes. And then final for clothes, before we move on to other things, two necklaces. But again, I've had these for years and I have mentioned them before, but I still get questions about them. So this, this is a necklace by Tina Tarnoff on Etsy, which I adore. I will link her shop in the description box down below. And then this, which I'm also asked about so much, is also from Etsy and it's a laser cutout Red Riding Hood and wolf necklace, which I also love and have also had for years. Let me focus back in on myself. There we go. Um, next on my list, we have nail varnish. I always wear nail varnish. Um, and if I'm not wearing Etsy, which I am today, I'm wearing a Shea. Now these were gifted to me and I was so thrilled to receive these. So Ashe is a nail varnish subscription company. They are vegan, cru cru vegan cruelty free and are a small black owned business based in London. So if you're looking for a nail varnish subscription service or if you would like to buy individual polishes, which you can do once they have appeared in the subscription boxes, I will link them in the description box down below. My next favorite is this. I feel like I may be the only person on the internet who is not sponsored by Wild, but the sponsorships that other people did, they got me. And I was like, yes, I do want a more sustainable deodorant. Thank you very much. So Wild is a sustainable deodorant. So it comes in this, which you keep for life, and then you buy uh, the refills. Um, the refills are in the bathroom, so I'm not gonna run and get them, but um, you slot them inside, and you can rebuy the refills which come in biodegradable packaging so everything is as um, waste free as is possible. This is a natural deodorant which I had never tried before and I have extremely sensitive skin because I have ectodermal dysplasia. I have to moisturize several times a day um, just in case you needed to know that. Um, but I mentioned that because I was apprehensive about wearing this because obviously your underarms are very sensitive anyway, but for me, they are particularly sensitive. So I didn't know if this would be any good for me. Um, I used to use Dove, which I never had a problem with, their extra sensitive version. I always found really creamy and great. This I have found really good, except now, which, Tell me, do people do this anyway? I assume that people do not, but maybe it's one of those things which I've just never thought about. I find that now using this, I have to moisturize under my arms as well, which I have never ever done, done before because I guess the deodorant I was using before was super, super moisturizing. So even though this is creamy, I will say it's not as moisturizing as something like Dove. They also have a sensitive skin range, which is really good. The scents in this, are incredible. So this one, they last ages too. So this I bought in October. So I've been using it for several months now and this one hasn't run out yet and they have seasonal scents. And this one is a toffee apple one. I never thought that putting deodorant on could be so exciting. So um, I approve, I approve of this. Cooking, you know that I enjoy cooking and I've enjoyed cooking lots of different things this year. Sometimes I include cooking and baking as part of my reading vlogs. I even have a playlist for that, which I'll link in the description box down below. But two of my favorite, cook well, one of them is someone else's cooking, but my favorite cooking thing from 2021 has been this. Please ignore the spaghetti label because I need to change it. But Oxo Good Grips are a favorite as well, but I have mentioned before, they're great if you have arthritis like me or limb differences, very accessible kitchen wear appliances, utensils. I basically own everything that they have made and they help me out every single day. Um, but that is not what my favorite was that I was gonna mention, it's what's in here and this is Massa. So I have started making my own tortilla um, because it is so much better than store-bought tortillas and it is so easy to make. I didn't realize how easy it was. It's one of those things where you just always think, oh, that's probably complicated. I won't try it. And then you try it and you think, why have I never done, done that in my life? So Massa is this, which I have bought from Sous Chef. Sous Chef is an amazing website where you can get ingredients that may not be at your local supermarket. Uh, and I've used those for when I've been making like Japanese things, Korean things, Chinese things. They have all kinds of ingredients. We'll link them down below. So I picked up Massa and Massa you mix equal quantities, this and water, and then you just bring it together 
in a dough. And then, um, so I tend to use 300 grams of masa to 300 milliliters of water, mix it all together, split it into eight dough balls, which come together really quite quickly. And then you can use a tortilla press, um, but it's not necessary at all. If you buy the beeswax sheets, which you can use to wrap up leftover food to put in the fridge to avoid using plastic. Um, so if you put one of the balls of dough between two of those beeswax sheets and then put that between two heavy books and stand on it, you will get a perfectly flat, excellent tortilla. Like, trust me. And then you just tip that into a non-stick pan, a couple of minutes each side on a high heat, and then you have a tortilla and you can make soft tacos and burritos and all that stuff. It is delicious. Corn tortillas are, homemade corn tortillas are about a million times better than store-bought flour tortillas. So that is my advice to you. Try it, honestly. It's so good. And if you're wondering what we put inside our um, burritos, we have roast sweet potato. We make some red pickled onions. So just pickle really thin slices in vinegar for a little bit. Um, black beans, chipotle, avocado, sour cream, cheese. Mm, it's, I'm getting really hungry talking about it. It's really good. Making these um, to keep them whole, I tend to make quite small tortillas and then overpack them. And then, you know, it's a challenge to try and eat them. So that's always, that's always fun as well. The other food thing is not something that I have made, but something that I have purchased. And that is Matsudai Ramen. They do these ramen kits. They are a restaurant in Wales. They deliver nationally, I think across the whole of the UK. And they are incredible. They have vegan options. I just absolutely adore them. You're essentially just reheating everything. They make their own noodles incredible so definitely recommend them i will link them in the description box down below it was my birthday yesterday i am now 35 um so there are some flowers in the flat at the moment which always make me smile so i'll do a cutaway to show you those but i mentioned flowers because a small company that i used a couple of times last year is a company called flower b and they can send through the letterbox some wildflowers to people and they do handwritten notes of any messages that you want to include and i just think that that's really lovely so they're not huge bunches of flowers they're just little ones that you can put in jam jars and I just really think that they're sweet so I wanted to mention those a lamp that I have loved and have talked about in a video before is the serious readers reading lamp I worked with them in was it October November what is time I don't know but they got in touch with me and asked if they could send me their lamp because the lamp is designed specifically for older people, but also people with vision problems, which I have. And I cannot tell you how amazing it is. Obviously it doesn't make your vision any better, but the light emulates daylight. It's a certain kind of light bulb that they have invented. And they've worked with um, Singer sewing machines, they've put lights in spacecrafts and oh, that wasn't a word, spacecrafts and submarines. Essentially, they know what they're doing when it comes to good lighting. And I have so loved reading with that lamp. And they did give me um, a code to give to you, which had a deal in it. I'm not sure if that's expired or not, but I'll link that in the description box down below. They gifted the light to me and it is an expensive light and I appreciate that. And it's not gonna be for everybody, but if you have the budget and you are looking for a really good reading light, maybe because you also have vision issues or just because you want a good reading light, then they are a wonderful company and they're a small family owned business and I just can't say enough good things about them. So I really love that. Board games board games um we've kind of been reverting back to just old favorites we did play some new games in 2021 including the unlock escape rooms which i really enjoyed not all of them some of them were a bit frustrating because they hadn't been translated well and the clues didn't work but i will link my favorite unlocked boxes in the description box down below they are escape rooms but they're card games so it's not you're not going anywhere you're just staying in your house and trying to solve the clues but the one we've been going back to recently is patchwork which is a two-player game and it's essentially tetris but you're building a patchwork and you have a certain number of buttons which will allow you to buy a certain kind of shape but sometimes you don't have enough to buy the one that you need tense as tense as you know a board game about textiles could be i really love it i find it very therapeutic and i um, have also made a video before where i've talked about my favorite board games in general so i will link that down below 
if you happen to be interested in that. Books, I have obviously made a whole video talking about my favorite books of the year, so I won't talk about those here. I will just link that video down below. There's a lot of linking going on, I'm sorry. Um, but you will also know that one of my favorite things to do in 2021 was to finish reading all of the Nikki French books, which I have now done. And as you know, I'm a huge fangirl. So when their publisher and Tandem Collective who run um, book clubs got in touch with me and asked if I would like to host a read along of their latest book, The Unheard, I was super excited. So this is happening right now on Instagram. If you want to check out the hashtag and take part, this is not part of the work that I'm doing with them, but I'm having a good time. So I just thought that I would mention it. And if you want to read the book in the future, because the read along's happening right this second, unless you already have a copy of the book or can get the audiobook or ebook, it's probably too late for you to join in. But if you want to join in in the future, you can check out the hashtag, which is the unheard read along and see everyone's posts um, if you would like to see other people's thoughts. So we are on to films and TV. A film that I've listed on this list, and I don't think it's probably one of my favourite films of the year, but I watched it in December, and I don't think I'll do a winter favourites because I'm doing this. So I just wanted to mention it because I did enjoy it, and I've been thinking about it a lot, and that is Another Round. It's a Danish film, and the reason that I watched it is because it's got Mads Mikkelsen in, who I absolutely love. Um, and I'd seen the video, which is actually the end of the film, and it's not a spoiler, but it's Mads dancing, um, and it's such a charming clip and I will link that down below again with everything else in the world um, and it just made me smile so much I just think he's a great actor I, I, I really really love him so we ended up watching the film and it's about is it four men five four men who are in their 40s 50s and they they all work in a school and it kind of reminds me like if characters from the secret history grew up and didn't achieve the things they wanted to achieve, maybe this would be them. It has that kind of dark academia vibe. So these guys are all really close friends, but they don't really share things. And then they go out and they get drunk and they use alcohol in a really unhealthy way. So trigger warnings for alcoholism and stuff. And they decide that they're gonna do this experiment where they think they'd be better at their job if maybe they're a bit drunk. And they decide it's a really academic fun thing that they're going to do. But as you can maybe tell by that premise, it's probably not going to go as well as they think it's going to go. So sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's heartbreaking and horrible. What's really interesting about the film is that even though, yes, there are clearly wrong and right things that are done in this film, there's also some really murky areas. And it's not something that presents you with an answer on a plate at the end. Um... And I think that's why I've been thinking about it a lot because there are lots of unresolved things and characters still learning and thinking. And in that respect, I found it very human, I think, um, uh, as all the best films are. So I would maybe recommend checking it out if that sounds like your cup of tea. Um, you can find it on Now or, or Sky. Another film that I really liked is Truffle Hunters, which follows a series of truffle hunters in Italy. Um, there are a lot of primarily old men who love their dogs and they go out looking for truffles to sell to these truffle connoisseurs who remind me a lot of estate agents <laughs> who kind of con them out of the truffles that they have collected and then sell them for a huge price to restaurants. It has the aesthetics of a Wes Anderson film, but it's not a Wes Anderson film in, in any other way at all. It's really slow, very reflective and just beautifully shot. I have to mention Inside by Bo Burnham, though I've definitely listened to the soundtrack more than I've ended up watching the film. I think I've only really watched the film once, maybe twice all the way through and then have watched various clips. But Bo Burnham was someone who was famous online when he was 14. He's now in his 30s and this is a satirical look at the internet and social media and it's really really brilliant and the music is very catchy and I can't really say anything else apart from just watch it I would say or just listen to the soundtrack but I think you kind of have to watch it before listening to the soundtrack to get the most out of it I also love the film Promising Young Woman as well which I've also spoken about before and so have loads of other people and I was really really a fan of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings which was a Marvel film that came out last year didn't really like any of the other Marvel films that came out obviously I've only seen them on Disney Plus haven't been to the cinema um I am so excited for Spider-Man but can't watch that until it's on Disney Plus 
So um, out of the ones that I've seen, that was definitely my favourite. And then moving into TV series, Hawkeye was also something that I loved last year. But I have talked about that extensively in a reading vlog that's coming up probably next week. So I won't talk about that here. But I will just say that I was thrilled with the representation in that film. It was not perfect, but it was good. And I'm going to talk about that in the, uh, in the video that's coming out next week. Also in TV favourites, Vigil. It's a great lesbian crime series about a police detective who has to go into a submarine because a murder has been committed. So she's trying to solve it in this confined space and it's so tense. And I think maybe that was my favorite thing that I watched last year on TV. Also loved Mayor of, Mayor of East Town with Kate Winslet. She is a detective who's trying to solve a case in a small town. And after I read the Roxanne Weary series, the first of which is called The Last Place You Look, I couldn't not associate that with the Mayor of East Town. So if you've read those books, definitely check out that TV show. I think it's phenomenal. Speaking of crime, also watch Lupin. Enjoyed it. If you like Sherlock Holmes, an old mystery, but you want an updated version that's set in the modern day in France, but it's quite tongue in cheek, a bit charming. Um, I would definitely watch that. I think it's great. Something that also really made me smile was We Are Lady Parts, which is a TV show about a group of young women who set up a Muslim punk band. And it's hilarious and heartwarming and fantastic, and you should watch it. Something that also made me smile a lot was The Chair, which is a Netflix series starring Sandra Oh. And I just thought it was a really great reflection on academic life um, and also complicated family living. It is about racism in academia and her trying to assert herself in her new role and also uplift the other women within the university and encountering so much backlash. She's trying to change things in a great way and the amount of frustration involved in that is ridiculous. There are so many comedic elements to it as well. I think it's a really, really great show. How many times have I said that? Um, then What If is something that's on Disney Plus which is a series of one-off Marvel shorts, which are cartoons, imagining certain Marvel scenarios if things had turned out differently. So if Captain America ended up being a woman, so if Peggy became Captain America instead of Steve, what would that have meant for the series? And then it follows it through and shows all the repercussions. And I just love all that intertextuality and multiverse stuff. I enjoyed that. Like everyone, I loved Squid Game. Do, do I need to talk about that? Probably not. And then also I loved It's a Sin, which feels like a long time ago now because it came out quite early on in 2021. Um, it is a Channel 4 series looking at a group of teenagers or people in their early 20s um, in London in the 1980s and it's about the AIDS crisis and it is just heartbreaking and wonderful and some of the best acting that I have ever seen. And then there was a period of 2021 where Miss M and I were watching farm based things so we ended up watching Clarkson's farm which I didn't want to watch really at first because I don't like Jeremy Clarkson but everyone kept saying it was great I was really confused so I did watch it and I did think that it was great he decided that he was going to farm this farm that he has in the Cotswold that he bought ages ago and other people have been running it and he thought well I'm gonna run it for a year and see what that's like it's a real insight into farming and what farming is like uh, and how Brexit, etc., has impacted farming. It really breaks it down and was actually very eye-opening, and not just for me as a viewer, but for him as a person doing this thing. So it showed like quite a different side to him, which was interesting. So I actually enjoyed watching that. And then also we ended up watching Victorian Farm and then Edwardian Farm, which is a series of historians who run a farm for a year as if they were Victorians using only things that would be available to them as Victorian farmers. And that was fascinating and just the most wholesome content, especially the Christmas episodes. We've gone back to the Christmas episodes quite a few times. So uh, also finally, finally, final one. Um, we started watching and finished watching Succession right at the end of the year. It's what we did over the Christmas break. We watched all three series, somehow very late to this, um, but kind of glad because it meant that we could just watch all three series at once. It's a group of people who are all horrible and they're trying to outdo each other and get to the top of this family-run company. They're all awful. It's about who you hate 
less but for some reason it's just really fascinating and again I'm sure that you've heard about it because everyone's been talking about it but let me just throw my two cents in and say that I really enjoyed that show as well so those are all of my favorite things or at least all the things that I could remember when I was writing this list I would love to know what things made you smile in 2021 do let me know in a comment down below I hope that you're all doing okay if you're new to this channel and would like to subscribe that would be lovely I will be back with a new video very soon and sending lots of love bye